Hey, man, I need a fix. I need a fix bad. So you need a fix, huh? Oh, God, man, I need a bad. Hook me up. I got your fix. I got your fix right here. Alright, Jeep Junkies, we know you're jonesing for a midweek fix, so we're going to hook you up with a little midweek XJ Talk Show to tide you over. Hey guys, tonight we have Nate, you know him as Pedal Trucker on XJTalk.com, and uh, he's here with us to to share an interesting off-road story with us tonight. Hey Nate, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Tony. Now, uh, like I've uh, like I've always said on these interviews, I like to get a little bit about uh, the person. Now, obviously, um, you're a member uh, on xjtalk.com, and people uh, may already know some things about you from your posts there. But we may actually have people that only listen to the podcast. So uh, take a few moments and just uh, give us a little background about yourself. Um, I'm just uh, uh, just a backwoods truck driver. <laughs> live out in the sticks grew up pretty much where I live now and um, I really enjoy messing with my Jeep I don't get to do it as much as I'd like uh, but I do enjoy the forums and and uh, it's a good way for me to uh, go on there and look at pictures and learn about my Jeep and figure out what I, what, what I want to do with it in the future now you're in Oklahoma correct? correct northeast Oklahoma and um, there's, uh, I can't remember, there's something interesting about your, uh, the, the truck that you drive. Is, is It's an older truck, right? And has a, a, lot, a lot of miles on it or something? Right. Um, it's a 96. Um, it's got just under two, 2 million miles on it. Um, I went uh, 1.8 million on the, on the original engine, which is a lot. Usually you rebuild them. Oh, a little after a million, maybe go as much as a million and a half, but a million eight, that's a lot. Um, I drive an older truck because I don't like all the emissions. The, the newer emissions engines are not as efficient. Um, all the computers, and uh, I can I can work on mine for the most part myself. As long as I don't have to get inside the engine, I can do pretty much everything in the yard. And, uh, and also, a new truck costs Hundred and thirty, hundred and forty thousand, and comes with a nice big three thousand dollar month payment. I don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it easier to make ends meet, I suppose. Uh, well, th- th- there's no such thing as a rich truck driver to start with. Um, so, uh, anything I could do to scrape up a few pennies is what I do. Oh, well, that's great. And uh, you're really in the same area that you were born and raised at, uh, correct? Well, I, I was born in Texas, native Texan. One of these days, I do have plans to go back and, and uh, live in the eastern part of Texas in the Piney Woods. That's I own a little property there, and that's where I want to go eventually. But, yeah, I moved, moved into northeast Oklahoma, um, about a half hour east of Tulsa, gosh, when I was 14 years old or so. And uh, I'm about to turn 40. I've been there ever since. And, um Moved a quarter mile south of where, pretty much where I grew up. So, um, got a lot of a lot of years right in the same area. And and uh, from your post, I, I see that you're uh, a uh, uh, well, I want to say avid fisherman, but you enjoy fishing. Right. Uh, my hobbies are are fishing and flying airplanes, and and right now the with the way the fuel prices are, uh, fishing is a lot cheaper. So oh, I do yeah. more fishing than flying. Now, just think if you could could could, uh, could combine those two things. I guess it'd have to be with a helicopter. <laughs> no, I, believe it or not, I have this plan. See, all I need is a float plane with pontoons on it. Of course, and I, can tie, I can tie my kayak underneath of it and fly around wherever I want to fish, and 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 that would be ideal. But so far, I haven't found a, a sponsor that will that's willing to fund my uh, my adventures. <laughs> The, the fish just aren't worth that much uh, <laughs> to fund a, uh, a $200,000 uh, plane. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, speaking of helicopters, uh, not really uh, uh, pontoon planes, but speaking of helicopters, you had a uh, an interesting story uh, 
that you shared with us on xjtalk.com and I had requested that you join us here and uh, and share it with our uh, our podcast audience. Um, what t- about what, when did this uh, take place? About what year? Oh gosh, I'm going to say around 90. Okay. Well, go um, ahead. I was, go ahead. I was, Tell uh, us about it. Okay. Well, I was a junior in high school, so 17 years old about in there. My brother just younger than I was. And there is an uh, abandoned, uh, what, what was intended to be a nuclear power plant. And you can Google it. It's called Black Fox Nuclear Plant. And it was, it's just a couple miles south of where I live. And it's about four square miles, maybe a little more. And as far as they ever got with the construction was putting in a series of roads and a series of pads, uh, all concrete with, there's a cooling, uh, pond in there. And, but then it was defeated and it was pretty much abandoned. The whole thing was fenced off. And this was in the early seventies. And so it is, it's been sitting there for a very long time, just abandoned. Uh, nothing there except for a, a, a system of roads. And, of course, growing up, you've got this, what we all always were told it was owned by the government. It's actually not, but growing up we thought it was. It's all fenced off with this 10-foot-tall chain-link fence with barbed wire around it. And, and, and in grade school... You know, wild stories abound about the, the government projects and and things that go on in there. And the Air National Guard uses it for a practice area for their helicopters. And and uh, so it, it's kind of like our, our own little Area 51 for uh, Redneck, Oklahoma. And uh, one night, my brother and I, I and a friend were, were coon hunting in there. And we had permission to be there. Um from a, a gentleman that had at least run cattle on. And we were in my brother's truck, an old uh, four-wheel drive, three-quarter ton truck that my brother saved up and paid for before he got his license. And we were coon hunting at about 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and everything was pretty, pretty dead. And we were waiting in the bottom of a gully. We thought our dogs might come through there and strike and tree. They never did. Well, all at once, we heard him tree probably two miles from where we were. So we had the four-wheel back up to the road, which we did. And one of our, our buddy was in the back, and he would stand up and shine his light around try to find our dogs. But they were a long ways off. So we got on this road, and we just started hauling butt, trying to make it to our dogs. And... We had heard helicopters flying around, uh, which, like I said, that was no, that was not anything out of the ordinary. They always did it. But as we're driving along on this road, and my, my little brother was driving, and he was running about 55 or 60 miles an hour, and our buddy in the back sticks his head through the little sliding back window, you know, and he says, there's a helicopter chasing us. <laughs> and I looked up. And, That's something you always sure like enough. to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, well, there was a helicopter up there, but I shrugged it off. I said, that's not chasing us. He's just flying around. Well, it wasn't very long. This thing was treetop level, maybe 300 feet behind us. I mean, obvi- it was obviously chasing us at this, at this point. Well, of course, when you hear the stories you hear about this place, you know, we don't know if our... our Maybe we weren't supposed to be in there after all. You know, are we in, in some serious trouble? What do these guys want? And and my brother's got scared, and, and he floored it. He's going to try to outrun this UA-60 Blackhawk helicopter, which is not going to happen in a 76 Chevrolet three-quarter ton pickup. Well, they just they just kept kept on us and kept on us, and all at once they, they banked really hard to the left and pulled the side of us on our left side, just above the weeds. And we can see guys in there, they're waving flashlights and and, and doing things, you know, trying to get our attention. We, we couldn't really tell what they were doing. And that just made my brother go faster. And <laughs> and we're all screaming. And I mean, it was really like something out of a movie. We're, you know, it, it was, like I said, the, the seat was irreparable. And um, it wasn't very long. Um, this helicopter did 
it, it kind of it got out a little bit wide, banked really hard to the right, and it went across the road in front of us. And as it did, it swung its tail around, so we were kind of like nose to nose. And it and it just pulled into a hover on the right side of the road. Of course, we had to we had to get in get in the brakes and stop. And at that same moment, I guess because there was a helicopter off to our left, we didn't notice the one that was sitting on the road in front of us. So we had to do a stop with this the second Black Hawk helicopter um, in the headlights. And now here's the first one. It's hovering to the right of us off the road, and. Uh, my brother was crying. Um, <laughs> my legs were shaking. My buddy in the back, he was laying down in the bed of the truck like he was going to hide or something. <laughs> and all at once, these guys on the second Black Hawk helicopter, they're waving their arms and stuff to get us to stop. They start running up our truck, about four of them. And at this point, we're pretty well freaked out. I mean, it's whatever's wrong is bad wrong. So they come running up, and the first guy makes it. And we're, you know, uh, we have law enforcement in the family, so we know enough to keep your hands where everybody can see them and be cool, you know. Right. And um, the the first guys make it to our windows, and, they, and they're scared to death like we were. They said, "Oh, you, you guys, you scared the, you scared the crap out of us." And we're, <laughs> we're like, uh, "What? <laughs> oh, you, you scared the crap out of us." Well, what had happened, um, the hel- they, those were the two helicopters we had heard flying around that night while we were hunting. And um, they were doing some kind of a training maneuver at night. Well, the one, something happened. He had lost all electrical power. And his engine was run- his engines were running, but, but he had to set it down. And they knew the area really well. Um, and if you were to if you were to pull that up on Google Black Fox Nuclear Plant, you could see. I mean, it, it'd be a great place for an aviation emergency. I think you'd probably land anything there. And uh, set they set the helicopter down, but it was totally in the dark. And uh, the other helicopter had been circling above that one, and they were marking the spot. They were waiting for a third helicopter to show up with a mechanic and some parts, and they thought they could fix it and fly it out of there. But they hadn't planned on three rednecks in a wore out old Chevrolet four wheel drive truck come screaming up this road right at their helicopter. I, I would I'd be afraid to know what that thing cost, but but they were they were convinced that we were gonna go screaming up and just run right into the side of this thing. So the first helicopter was simply trying to get our attention so that we could slow down and stop and not run over their buddies in, in the other helicopter. Yeah, and it, but, it would have been clear to me that they <clears throat> they only wanted you to stop so they could use you for military experiments. Well, you know, <laughs> our, I think I don't know what my brother thought. My thought was, we're not supposed to be here. We're in very serious trouble. Yes, uh, you know, but you hear all kinds of stuff, and and we didn't know. We just knew that, it, you know. It's an unusual event to be chased at the top, you know, weed, uh, just over the weed by a Black Hawk helicopter. Um, it, it was, uh, it was definitely unnerving for, for a group of kids who were in the woods at night. And it, it, it was like, what well, was like three o'clock in the morning too, wasn't it? Right. We had been, we had, we'd, we'd, uh, turned our dogs out at about midnight and, it was a little after three, and they hadn't done anything so far. But we were pretty bored. So when they, when we heard them strike and tree at about three o'clock, uh, we were really excited. But they were a long ways away. Like I said, we still had to four, use four wheel drive to get back out of this gully and up onto the road. And then once on the road, we, you know, we were trying to get to them as quickly as we could. And we knew that we knew that place pretty well. We hunted it quite a bit, a few times a month. And um, we knew that there there shouldn't be anybody in there besides us, and that the little road system was all to our all of all to ourselves, or at least so we thought. Um, until the uh, military aviation got involved with us. <laughs> so, so, so did they have anything anything additional to say? Did they hang around, or did they let you guys go, or 
what no, happened no, after uh, after they spoke with you? Um, we uh, we talked to him for just a little bit. He told us what was they they told us what was wrong with the helicopter and and uh, I I can't remember what it was. Yeah, no, I, I don't imagine you'd be processing information very good, being that uh, that uh, anxious I, about what was going on. <laughs> I, I was at that point. I was extraordinarily glad <laughs> that I did not have to throw away underpants. I'm gonna live. <laughs> so but we, of course, now now we're also after after a few minutes of this, we're also still worried about the seven dogs we have turned out. Sure. Uh, well, back back then we had we had quite a bit of money tied up in these coon hounds, so we we left them. Um, they didn't stop us, or I mean. They didn't have any reason to question anything we were doing. They just didn't want us to crash our seventy-six thousand dollar truck <laughs> into this multi-million dollar helicopter that's sitting there. That's all they were interested in. Yeah, that's great. So this has to this has to be a great story to remind your brother and your friend that was trying to hide in the back of a pickup uh, years later. I mean. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, there's when we get together, you know, we, I'll rib the one, I'll rib my buddy about hiding in the truck, and and my brother will start and well, shut up, you were crying, and, and <laughs> but, uh, both of you shut up, and, uh, you were you were white as a ghost and shaking like a leaf, and uh, that, without a doubt, um, we were all extraordinarily scared. Um, there's no question that that uh, we were very very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that had to have been wonderful. That's got to be a a memorable moment uh, that will uh, probably last you a lifetime. You know, in the you know nowadays everybody's got the GoPro cameras, and I know when I fish, a lot of my friends videotape themselves fishing, and I even have videos on YouTube of me fishing in my kayak and stuff. Uh, but then, you know, heck, we didn't even have cell phones. You know, no pagers even. I mean, it was that was before all of that. But, I would have sure given anything for some, one of us to be wearing one of those stupid helmet GoPro cans. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that would have been great. It had to have been a wonderful, wonderful sight. Now, was the was it kind of was it very dark out, or was there a moon, or, or do you recall? It, there wasn't much of a moon, but it was pretty bright. Um, uh, it, it was a pretty, it was a clear night, and it was pretty bright outside. Um, we probably. I don't think if, if the one helicopter hadn't chased us, I think we would have seen the other one. I think the only reason the one that was on the ground just suddenly appeared in our headlights is because all of our attention was focused on this helicopter chasing us. Oh, of course. Um, you know, had, had they just been two helicopters on the ground, I'm sure we would have seen them. We'd have probably stopped. We would have probably dove off of the, high, off of the roadway into the woods and hid like little girls until we figured out what they were doing. But um, instead, you know, we got to we got to experience that and act like little girls directly in front of the Air National Guards. And they were they were very very friendly. Um, they came up and you know, like I said, run up to the truck and you know, oh, you scared us to death. And uh, but we all had a big laugh and, and and it really they were they were really I mean honestly just complete just super friendly people and uh and they thought it was funny they knew they had scared us to death uh we we give them a little scare so i'm sure uh, maybe they probably talk about it too nowadays but yeah. i don't think i don't think they talk about it the same way my my brother and my <laughs> friend and I talk no about it. no i'm sure uh but uh the the thing and, and I, I can imagine that the the guy flying the helicopter Somebody in there said, we need to leave those guys alone because we're just going to scare them into the other helicopter. And the other one said, we can't take that chance. <laughs> and then about halfway into it, they all realized that they shouldn't have done that <laughs> because they were like guaranteeing <laughs> that you were going to, they were going to chase you into the other helicopter. <laughs> when, when he banked, when he got out a little wide and banked back across in front of us, I mean, I think he knew at that point, you know, we, we have to stop them now. Yeah, yeah, that's what exactly what it sounded like to me. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, it was tense. Probably it felt like they chased us uh, ten, twelve miles, uh, but the only the place is only two miles, two miles deep and two miles wide. Yep, so. <laughs> yep. Time uh, 
time got uh, stretched because of uh, well, it got compressed in your head, so it seemed like it was a lot longer. Yeah. And I'm sure my brother was doing 240 miles an hour, but I, I don't know if a Chevrolet 350 under 410 gears would do that or not, but it sure felt like it. I know exactly what you mean. Okay, well, the most important part of this story, what happened with the dogs? Were you able to get to them? Were they okay? Oh, yeah, every, everything was fine. Um, they had had a, had a, had a coon treat, and and we got to, we, we never, we hardly ever killed anything. We would, we would let our dogs tree and every once in a while we'd knock a coon out of the tree and let the dogs fight with it to kind of keep their interest up. But mostly we were, uh, we would just gather them up and take them and turn them out somewhere else and hunt all night that way. And by that time it was after we had met with the, uh, Air National Guard, uh, went and found the dogs and got them. It was mm, pretty close to four o'clock. So we just, uh, we had quite a story to tell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so we we went ahead and went home. And uh, Well, you were out there to have some fun, and uh, well, fun, not, fun almost believe, had you. <laughs> but believe it or not, that is not, that it, that's probably the wildest king hunting story I have. But there was also another time we were chased out of the woods by a lion. Um, but it didn't have anything to do with four wheel drive, so I didn't include that. Was it a? I guess it was a mountain lion. Nope, it was a African lion with a big mane and everything. Uh, did you ever get a, any kind of? Did you ever get any explanation to that? Why there was a? Was that a, 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 yeah, an we animal hunting. that somebody that somebody had an exotic animal that somebody had or? Yeah, there was, there's a guy uh, they call him Safari Joe, and he's got lions and tigers and stuff, and. We were hunting on a buddy of mine's place, and he had uh, cougars, and had a, had to get a license from the state, and had them in these cages, and and we were out in the woods hunting, and and it is kind of a drawn out story too. But out of the woods where we were sitting on this log comes this you know this lion and gave this little growl, <laughs> and uh, let me tell you something. This fat boy looked like Emmett Smith. I was passing dogs getting back to the house, and. Um, <laughs> When we got back to his house, um, there was a guy who knocked on the door and said, I've, I've lost a lion, you know, I figure he might have come here because we, and we knew who he was. I mean, everybody around knows the Safari Joe guy. Yeah, and, but uh, you don't walk around telling everybody, have you seen my lion? I mean, you need to keep keep well, a, a wild this, animal in, this, under control. This particular guy has been chased out of a lot of places. He's had some problems. But when he went out there, he had this little pickup with this little trailer and the cage on it, and he went out there and called him, and he the thing roared and walked up to him and was licking him on the face, and he just put it in the trailer like it was a big house cat or something. Oh, but, good God! Buddy, I was I was running and I was hurtling trees and bushes and running past dogs, and if you saw me, you would know how funny that is. And and you were also moving at the same two hundred and forty miles an hour that the the truck had yeah. moved in an earlier in, in your oh, earlier conversation. Oh, no, because, see, there, you, you don't have to outrun the attacking animal. You just have to outrun your slowest friend. Exactly. <laughs> Trip. <laughs> yeah, at that point, their nickname is Trip. I understand. The same thing in a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> I, I love you like a brother, but every man for himself. That's right. <laughs> Wow, that's an interesting area. I don't know if uh, East Texas is going to be able to comp compete with that. Oh, uh, I uh, I have some property down on uh, Cedar Creek Lake in northeast Texas, uh, pretty close to uh, between Ma Bank, Texas, and Gun Barrel City. And uh, one of these days, I'm gonna I'm gonna live there, and I'm not gonna do anything but fish all the time. <laughs> That's all I want to do. Well, hopefully, the lions and the uh, the Black Hawk uh, helicopters will leave you alone. Well. As my my boring life, those are my those are my two two big stories that have happened to me. Uh, well, I have, I I've done a lot of things, and I've never been chased by a helicopter, and I've never seen uh, a lion outside of the zoo. So you're you're already uh, two things up on me, uh, Nate. So <laughs> well, maybe if if the weather will cooperate on me, I will get my jeep lifted and uh, get. Get that, get that all built up, and uh, maybe I can go go out in the go wheeling in the woods, and and maybe I can get myself into some more trouble. 
Hey, the the show would really appreciate that because uh, this this story this story was great. <laughs> you just got to make either either I, take a recorder with you so you can record the the record the interview you know the one side of it uh, in the woods or make sure you make it back alive so that you can uh, come back and uh, and tell us about the the story. I would I would I would have killed to have that on video. Yeah, you know, because after I saw my own reaction, maybe I would maybe I would delete it and hide it and everything else. But, well, you just edit uh, edit your parts out and then leave the other uh, the other <laughs> stuff in with the other guys. That's, that's how you do it. There you go. There you go. Well, Nate, that's a great story. I really appreciate it. And uh, if you guys, uh, like I said earlier, Nate is uh, on xjtalk.com, Paddle Trucker. And, uh, uh, oh, <laughs> let, me, let me just mention that. You uh, – you said something about that the other night uh, in uh, during the live show and chat about your name and how popular uh, that name is, uh, uh, the paddle trucker. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, that I, I drive a truck for a living, and, and my hobby is kayak fishing, and, and I came up with that email address and that username to use on kayak fishing forums, and I just use it on all forums. And uh, uh, I... Several times I've had people ask me if I had some sort of a spanking <laughs> fetish. <laughs> and I, I, I never thought about anything like that when I chose that, that, that name. And, you know, you're just trying to come up with something that, some, that you can remember easily that no one else has. <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, that would fit. I could just see you at the truck stop uh, telling some, uh, some cutie there that, yeah, I'm paddle truckers. Well, honey, it's going to cost you extra. Well, no, we don't, we don't avoid those types of places and situations at all costs. But what's even funnier than that, my wife, my wife is in. Uh, she's we ride horses and stuff too, and I don't. She does a lot more than I do anymore. But um, and her, she's into fox hunting, and so in the town we live in is called Inola. And so her email address is Inola Fox Hunter, and mine is Paddle Trucker. <laughs> So those those pair of email addresses have got us all kinds got us into some interesting conversations. I'm sure. I'm sure the, the, those country <laughs> folks and uh, how they and their their ways that they have out there. <laughs> right, right. Well, well, Nate, I, I sure appreciate it. Great story, and uh, uh, I know that you're uh, you're driving tonight, so be safe out there. Yep, fixing to here in another fifteen twenty minutes. I'm gonna head out and leave Tulsa and go to Kansas City, Missouri. Be back in the morning. Oh, are you having to go through any still any wintry weather? I haven't been keeping up with. Uh, uh, it was uh, no, it was. It's been kind of cool up there at night, and we've been running last few nights. My brother and I have run through some storms, uh, but but no, I think the winter weather is uh, pretty well done. At least I hope it is. Yeah, I know. Uh, I've been reading a lot about uh, uh, various parts of the country. Can't believe that they're still getting snow and ice. Uh, and I, I wasn't quite sure if it, if that was going to oh, affect you. My my dad just got back. Uh, my dad took a load up into Canada, up up to uh, uh, it's called Red Deer, Alberta, and uh, he left out of Indiana and went up there. And he said all across North Dakota and Nebraska, he couldn't believe how much snow was was left. And he said he said he he's afraid that. When all that stuff melts, there's going to be a heck of a flood because he said he's, he he runs that quite a bit. He said he's he's never seen that much snow still on the ground this late in the year. Yeah. So. Well, I, I made a joke with a local weatherman on uh, on Facebook today because he was talking about uh, we had like the coldest temperature uh, in in our area here for uh, I, I can't remember he he posted it how long it had been quite some time it may have been a record low and uh, my comment was. Yep, it's that damn global warming. Um, I mean, uh, uh, climate change. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's another interview I could do for about an hour. Because um, that's, that's one of my big uh, pet peeves is, is uh, the global warming and climate change argument. Yeah, well, I, just, to, just to be clear, I have, no, I have no doubt that there is climate change going on. The, the doubt that I have is uh, how the, the, it's being portrayed that... Uh, evil man is doing it uh i'm sure that we have uh, a hand in things but uh the sun does a lot more uh to our uh weather than well, what we'll ever do what i always want to know is that when 
who who decided that what what the perfect temperature was and and that it was supposed to be that way all the time? Well, I it's, mean, it's not. You can look at the ice core. Other patterns, you know. Yeah, you can go. You can look at the ice core patterns. Uh, this, I mean, they've looked at ice core patterns, and it's it's a cyclical thing. It goes up and down. Their argument is is that it's uh, it's changed more rapidly during the industrial revolution than it ever has in the past. Well, well, that's not true either. Well, it it, the, it it may be true, but I think that it doesn't necessarily have to do with the amount of carbon that we're putting into the air. Um, you know, uh, it, you could go round and round, and and only time will tell. But uh, yeah, the climate's changing. But um, uh, well, being a ham radio operator, I know that the eleven-year sunspot cycle, we should be having uh, gangbuster conversations uh, on the uh, on the HF bands right now, and uh, we're not because the eleven-year uh, sunspot cycle, which is at its peak, I think it might be on the other side of the peak at this point. Uh, it, it never really got very good, and that's all controlled uh, about the, the solar radiation coming from the sun and affecting the ionosphere and the reflectivity of the ionosphere so that uh, you can make these radio contacts around the world. And it just right. hasn't happened. It hasn't been very good. So something is going on differently with the sun right now, and it's well, directly affecting the, uh, the earth. You need to, you know, I'm, I'm a ham operator too, but I'm just a tech. I don't do HF stuff, but... Uh, two meters, uh, two meters been been that way. When I first got into ham radio, man, uh, we would have band openings just all the time, and, and just talk completely across the country, simplex. And, and, and now that just that, that's a rarity for that to happen. Well, uh, two meters, I think you can get some some ion, uh, ionospheric. Um reflectivity but it's mainly uh most of the time on two meters it has to do with uh air mass like one a cold a cold air mass over a warm air mass and uh it's really cool it's very interesting how the different bands act uh differently um uh, on ham radio and you you just don't see that on cb because you're you're squinched into such a small um area of band and it it really only acts one way um So yeah, ham radio is really cool. Uh, do you, do you have a two meter in the uh, in the truck? I, I run a I run a dual band uh, two meter four forty band in the truck. Yeah. Do, do you ever hear anybody on four forty? <laughs> you know, not really. Um, <laughs> I when when I got it, um, boy, that, that, oh, you got to get you got to get a dual band radio. You got to get oh, a dual yeah. band radio. Oh, yeah. And so I went and paid the four hundred dollars for for the extra band and. And, and we have a repeater system that's linked all up. It goes from um, way up into Kansas all the way down into northern Texas. And all oh, that's nice. Together. Yeah. But, but, you know, it's honestly kind of a pain because there's just so many people on it if somebody does try to use it. But but they do have a net and a swap meet once a week, and that's kind of cool to listen to. But other than that, I I mean, I I rarely use uh, – I rarely use – use 440 yeah, I, in fact I, I, i've got friends that i've got friends that have all mode radios and and they run six and ten meter more than they run 440 in their trucks now I, i've heard six meters can be a lot of fun <clears throat> i've only made a couple of conversations or a couple of uh, contacts on six meters uh because it just doesn't seem like it's open that often but uh yeah six meters and of course 10 meters uh is great because it acts a lot like the cb band which is at 11 meters Anyway, we're right. we're geeking out on radio, and uh, we probably lost people at the 440 thing. I just I just think it's I just think it's so funny because I was the same way. I needed to get that that 440 or that 70 centimeters so I could have that dual band radio, and never ever used it. The only time I used well, it was like getting somebody on two meters and going, "Hey, let's jump over to 440," well, <laughs> and, I and then I, and then I, I would I, use it. I am glad that I bought that because I have a dual band dual receive radio. And I enjoy listening to the air bands and listening to the airplanes. So I keep I keep one side of the radio on two meter, and I keep the other side scanning the local aviation frequencies. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's how well, I use my dual band radio. Uh, I'll I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, uh, at least here in the Houston area, some of the radio stations will use four forty the four not not the ham range, but you know these things can the ham radios can receive outside of just the the ham bands. They will use like 438 or something outside of the ham band 
to send their uh, signal uh, from their studio to wherever the transmitter is. So you really? can, yeah, you can actually pick up the, like I used to listen to an AM broadcast uh, show on my uh, uh, dual band uh, handy talkie and it was FM uh, on the, uh, the 438 or whatever it was. So I actually got better audio quality on the, the link that they were sending to the, to the, the transmitter than listening to the AM broadcast. Cause you know, the AM broadcast is so susceptible to noise and, uh, electrical noise and lightning and everything else. So, um, you may play, you may play with that sometime while you're riding around. Huh, I didn't, I didn't know that. All right, Nate. Well, let's wrap this this puppy up. Was there uh, anything you want to pass along to the the guys? I know that you've been hanging out in the uh, the chat room lately during the live show, and I thought you might want to uh, give them a hello oh, or yeah, something. I, I, I tell you, I I just uh, I've, I've modified my schedule, and I'm not doing anything on Sunday nights, and and uh, so I I've re- I've really had fun uh, listening to the live show and and in the chat room and. And uh, especially when the when the perverts get on Amazon and make you and Josh read things, um, <laughs> I, that, I'm not a big chat room person. So that was that. That's about the only place I really do that. that I, I don't think I'll ever forget that show. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that was an inter- interesting show, and I tried to give Josh a heads up to to get him on there and look at that stuff, so he could come up with uh, some. Uh, creative yet uh, family-friendly ways to describe the uh, items on Amazon that night. <laughs> and uh, But the chat that went along with that was, uh, I, I really need a new keyboard. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. The, being in the <laughs> chat room is a lot of fun. Yeah, it really is. All right. Uh, well, Nate. <clears throat> I, 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 really, I really enjoy the site. I, I, I accidentally got into Jeeps um, when I got my Cherokee. I uh, I didn't know I was going to have the interest that I do now. And after being on all the other forums and trying to learn um, and getting flamed or scolded for not using Google or just all that stuff, I, I, I really love XJ Talk, and that's that's become my my pretty much my only uh, Jeep resource now, which is, which is fine because it's plenty. A lot of knowledge <laughs> there, and I appreciate it. Yep, it really is, and I appreciate the kind words. Well, Nate, thanks a lot for being with us, and uh, we really, we really are wrapping up this time, guys. This is okay. another one of those those uh, false wrap ups. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Tony. Thank you, Nate. My favorite site is xjtalk.com. XJ Talk, XJ Talk. It's where you go when you're not off road.